Welcome to the Want to Learn podcast. I'm your host, Franz Tapon. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing Open Dime. This is a USB stick that stores Bitcoin. And I'm reviewing version four of this very innovative product. And I've been a big fan of Bitcoin just because of all the innovation that it's going to be bringing to the marketplace. And this is a classic example of that. Think of this as like a piggy bank. It's something that in, in the old days, probably for people too young to remember what even a piggy bank is, when coins used to actually be worth something, you shoved in all your coins. Now, nowadays, think of it as $100 bills into a jar. And then you, when you want to spend that jar, you break it. So it's a one-use thing. A piggy bank doesn't last forever. You can't like get the coins out of there. You just have to break it. Same thing with the open dime. It is a way to put Bitcoin in and you have to effectively break it in order to get Bitcoin out. How much does this cost? It costs about, when you buy a pack of three, it costs about $17 each. So obviously you're not gonna put $2 on this thing and break it because <laughs> unless you're really dumb. By the way, it's not a hardware wallet. A hardware wallet is something like the cold card or the ledger. You know, these are hardware wallets that you're gonna use constantly. It's also not physical Bitcoin because there's this thing called Cassius that allowed you to have Bitcoins, but the private key was known. Here, the Bitcoin private key, in other words, like the keys to the money, are not known by anybody. In fact, even when you buy it, you don't know it. And the only way to know it is to break it. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Let me explain. <laughs> what you do is you take this device and you put the USB in either your phone. So for example, here I have a USB-C adapter that goes into an Android phone, but you can get this for uh, the, for a uh, Apple phone as well, iPhone. And you put your USB stick in it and shove that straight into your phone. And that way your phone can read it, but you can do it on a PC. It's even easier on a PC. It's going to have two LEDs, one that's blinking green to say, hey, everything's all right. and it's going to generate an address when you create entropy. What does that mean? How do you do that? You take any file on your computer, preferably just a picture that's unique that maybe you took that has unique data behind it. You drag it onto the USB stick and it's going to take that image, the little computer that's in here is going to take that image and hash it, which basically means scramble it and create an address, a Bitcoin address out of thin air just on this device itself. And then once it's created that, that address, you can then send money to that address. So then you've sent, let's say, I don't know, a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin to this address. Now at that point, you can look at the address and anybody who has this key can verify and prove there is a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin sitting on this key. And you know it, and everybody knows it anybody who has the physical key, but you can't spend it unless you break it. And how do you break it? <laughs> this high technology device, take a pin. And what you're going to do, as you notice there, there's a hole and you're going to take this pin and shove it through that hole. And in so doing what's on the other side of the hole, on the other side is this chip right here, a very small little chip that's going to be dislodged, broken, taken off the circuit board. It's going to, you're basically gonna break a piece of the USB stick, a critical piece that then tells the computer inside, generate and release the private key. In other words, the, sp the special thing you need to know in order to then spend the money that's inside here. And once you have that private key, anybody who has this device can spend it. It's really fascinating because it's a device that nobody knows a private key until you actually break a piece of it. And then all of a sudden, anybody who has this can spend it. Now, probably the number one question you would ask is why would anybody actually need this? There's four that I can think of. Number one, and probably the best one, is as a gift. Let's say you've got somebody who's kind of somewhat techno, maybe somewhat skeptical about Bitcoin. 
um, maybe it's somebody's birthday, maybe it's whatever, you can gift Bitcoin to them in this. It's gonna cost you $17 to buy the drive. It's kind of a gimmick, if you will, but by giving them Bitcoin, telling them, voila, here's half a Bitcoin in here, they're gonna maybe make an effort to get to know what Bitcoin is and maybe not throw this away and maybe create a wallet and maybe create a wallet so that they can store this Bitcoin in. And then they're gonna get into Bitcoin and all of a sudden they're gonna realize this skeptic who always thought Bitcoin's a scam, when you give them half a Bitcoin, half a Bitcoin's around $6,000 almost. And maybe a couple years later, that $6,000 is now $10,000. And he, this guy said, it's gonna to go to zero. And all of a sudden you're like, well, remember that little USB stick I gave you? Ha, it's worth more now. He's like, yeah, yeah, maybe I should buy some more. Maybe I should look more into this Bitcoin thing. So that's a great use. Um, I, I'm not sure I would give it to my grandmother or well, I don't have a grandmother right now, but um, uh, I give it to somebody who's technically incompetent because, uh, or somebody who's such a skeptical person about Bitcoin because they'd be like, I told you Bitcoin's going to zero. You know this half Bitcoin that you gave me here? I'm gonna actually just throw this thing away. Or maybe they don't, they're not so deliberate, but they just put it in a drawer and then they forget about it and then they look at this thing and like, what the hell? And then they put it in their drive and then they see it, that they can't, you can't actually store anything on this thing. You can't like, Permanently, you can't use it as a USB stick, as a typical USB stick, because it's read-only memory. You cannot write to this device. And so somebody might say, what the hell? I forgot, who, who gave me this? Why? Ah, forget it, just throw it away. And there goes your Bitcoin. So give it to somebody who's a little bit more enthusiastic about it. Okay, a second application, and this one is a little bit of a stretch, I think, is if you want to buy something in a hurry that's expensive. So for example, you want to buy a car. The person is going to accept Bitcoin as a payment and ideally that person knows what an open dime is. Because here's the thing, if you want to buy Bitcoin, let's say a car with Bitcoin and you have, let's say a hardware wallet, it takes about 10 minutes to get your first confirmation. In other words, your transaction is going through. So if you're buying a car, you're probably gonna have at least 10 minutes to wait around, have a coffee, whatever, look at the tires, look what's in the glove compartment. And during that 10 minutes, your transaction will be processing. So, uh, and if, it's, if you really wanna to wait till it's fully confirmed, you have to wait about an hour. So most people are going to be willing to wait 10 minutes to 60 minutes to buy a car. And, but if you're not that patient and if the person knows about open dime, because if he doesn't know about open dime, you're gonna probably have to spend like half an hour just convincing him that this is not a scam. <laughs> so that's the challenge. The person has to be a bit sophisticated and, oh, and, and understand, oh yeah, open dime, I know it. And all he has to do is then put it into any um, computer or phone. And then if the little LEDs are blinking red, that means the private key has already been compromised. And physically they can just inspect it and they can just see that if there's no, if that hole, if that little chip is gone, then that's another way of, of telling definitively that the private key has been uh, revealed already. And it's kind of not very smart to accept this as a device because somebody could just give it to you. And yeah, you could stick it in your computer and say, oh wow, there's three Bitcoins in there. Okay, great, yeah, take the car, here's the car keys. And as soon as that guy gets in his car and drives away, he instantly, since he knows the private key, transfers the money that's in here to his wallet. And then you come home, ha ha ha, and put it in an hour later and you stick it in. And you're like, oh, it's gone, all the money's gone. So anyway, you don't wanna be in that situation. So um, you need to verify that it has, it is still a virgin. And if it's not a virgin, then uh, the thing has been compromised. There's been mixed advice as far as whether you can continue to reuse these things uh, after you've broken the seal. Uh, official line from CoinKite, the company that makes this, says no, you shouldn't reuse it once the seal has been broken. But if you think, what if you broke the seal? So you know, only you know the private key. Well then I don't see the big harm of just putting money putting more Bitcoin, ref refilling the Bitcoin and reusing it yourself as kind of a, a wallet on the go. All right, third application of what you could use it for, you could sell open dimes with BTC on it. So there's a website called Local Bitcoins 
where you can buy bitcoins at a coffee, you know, meet up with somebody at a Starbucks and just say, hey, uh, I'm going here's three hundred dollars in cash. Give me some bitcoins. So it's all a cash transaction. Well, you could theoretically sell through uh, this card. So if you want to go there, if you have somebody who says, hey, I really want to buy one of these open dimes and I want to buy it pre-stocked up with, let's say, half a bitcoin or one bitcoin in there, you could do that. Put one Bitcoin, meet the person in a safe place, and then he gives you the money, and then you give him this, and you've sold it with that. That's one other idea. And then finally, some people are fans of paper wallets. Paper wallets have lots of flaws to them, and uh, one of the problems is that you can't, uh, generating the private key safely is not as safe as you can do it here on the, on the open dime. And there's a fifth application that I forgot to mention, which is using this open dime like a traveler's check. Back in the old days when we used to travel and they didn't have ATM machines, you would need traveler's checks as a way to kind of, you have to go to a certain bank and then you could convert those traveler's checks into real spendable currency in the local economy there. Nowadays, credit cards kind of do that, but this could also be another way of having a backup because if you're held up at gunpoint, it's possible that people will say, give me your cash, you know, so you give them your wallet and or if somebody's rummaging through your bag, you know, an unethical border guard and he wants to steal whatever money or cash or valuables, they may see this USB stick and may not see it as valuable or you can put it on the keychain and it just doesn't draw a whole lot of attention like real cash does or a credit card does. And so that can be your emergency get out of jail money in a desperate situation that can be used even in countries that have controls. For example, I was in Sudan and I couldn't send money through wire transfers. My ATM cards didn't work, nothing worked, but Bitcoin did work. So this could be your kind of emergency money when you're traveling, just carry it with you and maybe you put a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin on there so that if you're ever in a real, real jam, you can use that and plug it into any public computer and convert that Bitcoin into cash by working with a local to convert that money into local currency. So what's new with a version 4.0? Well, there's a few things that are new. First of all, let's admit from version three to version four, it's just an incremental upgrade. It's not a big, big deal. There is an improved form factor the way it is. Uh, it's, 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 it's a bit slicker than the version three. Um, there's improved ESD protection, which is important. Um, the speed has also improved somewhat. And finally, it's better and more reliable in case of any kind of damage. So it's a bit harder to damage. So they've kind of toughened it up, reinforced it. It looks kind of fragile because it's all bare bone and stuff like that. But part of the reason is to keep the cost down. And part of it is so you can make sure that it has not been tampered with. So. Uh, but now it's 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 more protected. And the final thing that they did is that they also added on their software page on their website a way to look at blockstream.info, which is another way to find out, check out the blockchain. And you don't, it's just one more provider so that you can see what's on this thing, what's the address and, and how much Bitcoin is residing at that address. Another cool thing I like about this is that it generates a QR code in the device itself. So then you can stick it into your smartphone or stick it on your computer and then have that QR code. You open it up on a browser and the, either the smartphone can read it on your computer or on the smartphone itself. You don't have to trust anybody, zero. You don't have to trust a manufacturer, you don't have to trust anybody nor to use Open Dime. Um, but it is an educational process. The private key is not known by the manufacturer coin kite it's not known by you there's no password by the way so there's no password there's no seed phrase to learn remember or lose whoever has control of this knows the has access to the private key that's it very simple very clean and so super secure but at the same time super open <laughs> because anybody who has physical control of this this is literally like if you've got ten thousand dollars on this thing you're literally just carrying, think of a $10,000 in cash, 100 
$100 bills sitting in your pocket just walking around your wallet like that. If you were to just leave this at the gym for anybody to pick up or on the office table, it's like leaving a thousand or whatever, $10,000 in cash just sitting there. And anybody who grabs it, boom, has control. So it's literally quite hot if, if you've got money in there. Of course, if you haven't put any money in there, it's worth only the cost you paid for it, which is $17 or so. So it's almost worthless. I know environmentalists will critique this because you know it's more e-waste because this is effectively a disposable thing but you can reuse it by the way you know for example if i gift somebody and i put a thousand dollars on here and let's say he spends only five hundred dollars worth of it he could then give it to somebody else as i mentioned earlier you can reload it and put more money into it although there's some you know risks with that because you're running around with it but some people may ask, well, how long do these things last? The answer is 50 years, roughly. Um, it could last as little as 25 years and as much as 100 years. Obviously, if you throw it in, in water, then you're going to be maybe decreasing its life. It doesn't claim to be waterproof, but it might actually survive a dunk in the water. Who knows? Another cool thing about it is that you can actually use it on an untrusted computer. So, for example, you could go to a public library and stick this into a public library computer. There's no nothing for a keylogger to listen to. There's nothing for a way to look at the password or anything like that. You don't need it. It's all just physical. So, yes, you can put it in an untrusted computer and it's still going to work. There's no password to forget. What do I think about it? Version 4? Version 4 is better than ever. Um, I'm sure they're going to come out with a version 5 uh, in 2021. But for now, this is uh, the, the best game in town. For physically representing and physically gifting Bitcoin to somebody. I admit that the amount of applications that you can use for this are limited. But I do think there's a power to give awareness to Bitcoin and give uh, education out there and evangelize Bitcoin by physically giving somebody one of these cards. It may be, I think one of the problems that Bitcoin has in any digital cash or e-cash has is that it's not physical. Um, the US dollar bill, even though 99% of the transactions that we do with the physical dollar, with the dollar bill is digital. We, it's nice to know that there's a physical dollar bill as well. I think a lot of people find comfort in that. And that comes from our, our history of always having coins and physical things. So this is a way to kind of help bridge people over and say, you know what? Bitcoin can be physical too. It's right here and represented in a USB stick in a very modern way. And a very secure way. So if you like anonymous transactions, this is just as anonymous as a $100 bill. CoinKite has innovated to a level that nobody else has in this space. And for that, I commend them. If you want to learn more about it, follow the links down below. Subscribe to my channel where I occasionally review and talk about Bitcoin. Other times I talk about travel and how they all intersect. Next time I'll be talking about this thing. It's a seed plate made by CoinKite as well. This is Francis Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn.